Hang on a minute. This ain't Mexico. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, June the 26th, 2019, and as you can probably tell from the scenery behind me, I'm no longer in Mexico after spending 15 months in that awesome country. But don't worry, I will be back there later in the year. I promise. About a week ago, I came back to one of my favorite destinations in the world. I am in Montreal, in Quebec, in Eastern Canada. The reason I say back is because I was here about six months ago in December 2018. Obviously at that time of the year, Freezing cold, winter, snow, horrific conditions, very difficult to film in. And one of the reasons I'm back is simply because I wanted to come back at a more suitable time of year to also show you what Montreal looks like in the summer. Now, just to clarify, this video is the first video in a series of videos coming from Montreal over the next couple of weeks. In this series, we're gonna be checking out some areas that we went to last time, including Old Montreal, Notre Dame, Boulevard Saint Laurent, as well as checking out some new areas that we didn't go to last time, for example, Little Italy, which is where I'm staying, Mile End, Mont Royal, Hochelaga Maisonneuve, to mention but a few. We'll also be checking out some of the amazing food available in Montreal. We all know that the food here is so diverse and absolutely spectacular, so I cannot wait to check out some new cuisine in this city. And additionally, it wouldn't be one of these videos without a bit of a final thought or a theme to the video. So today we're going to talk a little bit about emotional connection. You know, I had a great emotional connection with Mexico. So is it possible to have that kind of connection with Canada? We're going to find out. Let's get going. started off with a little brief look around Montreal we're now in one of my favorite spots in this city we're down Boulevard Saint Laurent more on that in a second in case you don't know Montreal the city and Quebec as a province are bilingual so you can speak English and French here I've never learned French in my entire life I studied German at school and I've been in Spanish speaking countries for a long time so I apologize in advance in these videos for my awful French pronunciation but I'm gonna try my best you know Now, I'm sure this is not the opinion of Montreal residents. Welcome, by the way, if you're from Montreal. But I feel like Montreal is almost forgotten about in terms of Canadian cities. Vancouver and Toronto, I think, gain a lot of the focus in terms of tourism. But Montreal has so much to offer. One of the reasons I absolutely love this city is because of the artwork and the fact that it's such an artsy city. There's so much culture in terms of art and music and creativity. There's a lot of those characters in this city that are those kinds of people. You know, where I'm staying in Little Italy is slightly hipstery, you know? I like that area. And in order to gain a great perspective of the artsy culture in Montreal, it's absolutely imperative that you check out this street art down Boulevard Saint Laurent and indeed elsewhere in the city. And it's something that's definitely been responsible for me appreciating art a lot more. I talked a bit about that in Mexico. And one thing about this street art that I've read about and people have told me is it changes on a regular basis. And even today, walking up this street, I've noticed street art that has changed since six months ago. It's amazing. Let's take a look at it.
Three words I would use to describe Montreal would be cosmopolitan, colourful and eccentric and I think the artwork that you've just seen completely contributes to that feeling. And one thing I really love about Montreal as well is the fact that it feels like London in many ways. You know, that's where I'm originally from and London is an extremely multicultural and diverse city full of different cultures and religions and Montreal is exactly the same. And also in terms of inclusivity, so in terms of the LGBT community, there's a massive gay village area. So it very much reminds me of London and that's what I like about it, I think. I, I think I feel accepted here. I think everyone, regardless of background or culture, can fit in in Montreal. And to illustrate that point, Montreal is very much a university city. So there's McGill University up that way. When I was looking for somewhere to stay here, there's many Indian students, student accommodation, that kind of thing. There's many Mexicans as well, which surprises me, who may be featuring in upcoming videos. You know, and I had a friend when I was younger who moved to Toronto. And, you know, I've read that 46% of Toronto, the population is made up of immigrants. I'm not sure how true that is. I don't know about Montreal as well. And many of my English students are studying IELTS to move to Canada to either study or work. So it just shows that Montreal is a key city in terms of immigration. Okay, our next stop in this video is Mont Royal. As you know, I love to gain an overview of a city from above, and this is the ideal place to do it. Let's go. Look at this man, so pretty. This definitely highlights the uh, difference between winter and summer in Montreal, just like in the UK. You know, you've got people sunbathing, you've got people reading books over there. You know, six months ago, that would not be happening. <laughs> Is this Canada? Sorry, that's a Mexico joke. Of course it's Canada. Look at this. You've got a gazebo, bandstand, kiosco, just like Mexico. You've got monuments in the background and already you can see the city off in the distance. It's quite hot, man. It's like 25 degrees, I think. Awesome. And you know what? I was half thinking to myself, should I just do this bit tomorrow? Cause I'm really exhausted. I could really do with going to bed. But then you know what? I thought of the girl in Nightmare on Elm Street who said, screw sleep. So we are climbing. You know what? And there's also a um, tourist bus here, like a red double decker bus. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. Cause I did one in San Luis Potosí in Mexico and I actually really loved it. I'm not going to lie. So let me know, and if there's enough demand for it, I will do that in a future video. We're into the woods, amigos. In the middle of Montreal, on a Wednesday afternoon. It's crazy to think, you know, there's a city, skyscrapers, streets, that sort of thing. And then you've got this whole wooded area, slap bang in the middle of the city. And it's such an important feature of Montreal, Mont Royal, that's where the name comes from. And it very much reminds me of um, when I was back in the UK, when I was a kid. When I used to go down to my nan's place in the southwest of England and we used to walk through the woods and go up steps and climb over things and it's just adventure, you know, this is what travel's about. I'm totally out of breath, but I don't care. It's awesome, there's trees, there's wildlife, there's birds and lots of walking. Now I have to apologise because you might think I'm talking crap now, but I'm really enjoying this today. I know it's only like a walk upwards through the woods and that, but this is the sort of thing I love and it's the sort of thing that reminds me of Canada so much. This is my third time in Canada now and as I mentioned about emotional connection at the beginning which we'll touch on at the end, Canada has a very special place in my heart. It's always been one of my top three countries, you know, after Mexico and Japan. And for a very special reason because my first ever solo trip was to Canada in 2006, 13 years ago. I went from Calgary through Canmore, Kamloops, Lake Louise, Banff, Jasper, down to Vancouver and across to Calgary. And I've got so many special memories of that road trip, driving about, staying in motels, exploring mountains, amazing scenery. And this just brings so many memories back. So um, I was worried that I wouldn't necessarily have an emotional connection with Canada, but I'm starting to realize that I do. I know I'm a bit hyper and overexcitable right now, like a child, but that's what travel does to me. There's the bus I was talking about. This is why I love Montreal. What an awesome way to get a great overview of a city when you first get somewhere even though it's the second time I've been here. Absolutely awesome. I believe you can go further up, which we'll have a look in a minute. Um, 
I was quite surprised by the fact that I got up here so quickly. It looks a lot higher than it actually is, I think. Um, obviously, it's very large, so there are numerous ways you can get up here and numerous lookout points. So you've got Avenue du Montreal, the Olympic Stadium over there, Parc La Fontaine, again, apologies for my bad pronunciation, uh, Pont Jacques Cartier, the bridge, I believe, over there. Um, Jacques Cartier was the first European to discover, in quote marks, Canada back in the 1500s. Absolutely beautiful. And coming up here just gives you an idea of just how green Montreal is. I didn't kind of realize that until I got up here. In comparison to, you know, concrete jungles like Mexico City and Sao Paulo, obviously Mexico City does have a lot of green areas, but it's not like this, you know, residential areas with, you can just see all the trees. see me but that's a good thing because look at that view man I found a little clearing in the woods and a couple of girls take selfies wait for them to finish just look at it man cityscape and I hate to compare places but this very much reminds me of the day I went up checkerboard hill in Hong Kong and overlooked the city it's absolutely stunning one thing I love in the world is big cities developed cities, cityscapes, skyscrapers, it's just spectacular. And before we go, let's just take a little look in detail. So over there you've got the biosphere. So Montreal, I think it was in 1967 or 68, one of them, it was the site of the like World Expo. And, and now I think it's a museum or something along those lines. I did go there <laughs> uh, the last day I was here the last time. I walked over that bridge and went to where the Formula One circuit is, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. That was just a couple of weeks ago, actually, in Montreal cityscape hotels in the distance central business district and in the foreground you've got like less developed buildings i guess like residential buildings so it's a, a real variety of architecture in montreal right i'm a sweaty mess i'm sitting in mud and my stabilizer is on a rock as a tripod as always which means it's time to bring this video to a close let's talk about emotional connection the theme of this video if you're a Mexican viewer or a Mexican, you might be thinking, well, David's going to be really depressed and sad when he gets to Canada and he's going to really miss Mexico. There's no denying that I miss Mexico. It's like a piece of my heart has been ripped out and I cannot wait to get back. But that's nothing against Canada. You know, I didn't expect to have the same connection with Canada as I do with Mexico because I never will, realistically, because it's not about the country. It's not about Canada. It's not about Mexico. It's about the time I spent in Mexico to develop that connection. And one of the things I have realized over time, I don't know why it's taken me this long to realize in the last three years of traveling full time, is the fact that emotional connection is so important when it comes to travel, in terms of your mental health, in terms of your enjoyment of a place. I used to go to places and just walk around and think, I hate this place, it's awful. I never gave it a chance. I didn't give it that time to develop in terms of connection. Puerto Vallarta, Kiev, Kuala Lumpur. But if I was to stay in those places for longer, I'm sure I would develop a connection to them. So what, I guess what I'm saying is the fact that if you are long-term traveling, traveling or indeed just on a short trip for a week, give it time. You know, you won't develop a connection with somewhere in five minutes. You have to go out and do things like I've done today. Get out there. You're not going to learn about a country. You're not going to connect to it if you're just sitting in a hotel or an Airbnb complaining as I used to do. So get your ass out there, do things like this, and build a connection, no matter how long it takes. I'm only in Montreal for one month. I'm not going anywhere else in Canada, so I'm not gonna develop the same connection. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try. I certainly am. So that's this video done. If you would like to see future videos from Montreal, and indeed the previous ones, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Are you from Montreal? Let me know about things which you would like to see in this upcoming series. Yes, it's a series. This isn't the only video. Don't forget that. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I'll catch you later.